Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, my friends. Whenever you are watching this video, welcome back to another math time with me, Miss X. I'm super excited to have you all here again. Let's begin by looking at our objectives. Remember, our objective is always broken up into three separate parts so we know exactly how we're going to do something, what it is that we need to understand, and lastly, why we're doing it or why it's important. Read with me or in your head as I read out loud to you. I will use the chip model and expanded form to show totals below method in order to show what the renamed number bond would be. I know my friends, that sounds very crazy, but I'm going to walk you through all of it with the teacher models. Welcome to the first part of the teacher model. You'll notice that I have a chip model already modeled out and drawn. Take a look, what expression did I model? Great, I modeled 23 plus 48. We know how to do this. Let's go ahead and do it. So I have eight ones and three ones, knowing that I can make a new 10 out of the 11 ones that I have. So I have eight and then nine, 10. I'm going to go ahead and move that over at a brand new 10. I have one, one left, and now I have seven tens because there's four here, one there, that's five, six, seven, so seven tens. Let's look at this as a number bond. Remember we have our whole and our two parts. What are the parts? Yep, the parts are 48 and 23. What is the total or the whole? 71. Let's record these totals below the line while we add our num numbers vertically. Let me rewrite that. So our original number sentence is 23 plus 48. Three ones plus eight ones is 11 ones or 110 and 11. One. Or 110 and 11. One, one. Now let's add the tens. Two tens and four tens is six tens, which is the same thing as 60. Let's keep going. Let's add to see what these two totals equal. Talk to a friend or a family member about the sum of 60 and 11. And then we will talk about it together as a team. Welcome back, my friends. So, 60 plus 10 plus 1 is 71. We added the 1s first, and then we added the 10s. Would we get the same answer if we added the 10s first and then the 1s? Yes, we would. Because... The number of tens and ones would still be the same. We would still get 11 and 60 because we're adding the same parts. Let's make a number bond of the parts when we add in this totals below method. Let me make that a little bit bigger. And label whole and parts. Okay, what are the parts? 60 and 11. Remember, we're drawing a number bond for the totals below method. So our parts would be 11 and 60. Or 60 and 11. What is the whole? Great, it's still 71. Or it is 71 also. So, 71 isn't just 23 and 48. It's also 60 and 11. I want to, you to pause the video here and talk with a friend or family member. How are these written methods the same and different? Welcome back, my friends. They all equal 71. Both models show adding like units to find the total. And when I look at the chip model, I can see 23 and 48, but I can also see 60 and 11. 
I see 60 with six tens here and then 11 with 11 ones or 110 and 1 1 and then six tens. Welcome to the next part of the teacher model. You'll see that I have a chip model up here as well as three numbers down here. This will be our chip model of reference and then down here I will show you three separate ways to solve the same chip model. Let's take a look at our chip model. Which number sentence did I model to you using the chip model? Great, I modeled 134 plus whoa, 28. My goodness, I almost got tricked. Alrighty, I can see pretty quickly that I have four and eight ones and it would only take two more ones to make a full 10 that I could bring over. So I'm going to add that new 10 and then I'm also going to look and see how many ones I have left. I have two ones left. Now I notice that I have three and three so I have six tens now and I have one 100. Super easy. I'm also going to go ahead and show my number bond for this problem. My two parts are 134 as well as 28 and then my whole is 160. Moving on to the second way we're going to solve our chip model. We agreed that my chip model showed 134 plus 28. Let's take a look at our chips. I see that I have one chip which is 100 or it represents 100 when I have one chip under the hundreds column. And then I see that I have five tens which represents 50. And then I see that I have 12 ones. I also just keep in my head that 12 ones is the same thing as one 10 and two ones. Now, I'm going to see that, wow, I have two ones left because I'm going to have to regroup anyways again, like I did the first time. Yeah, I only have two ones now, and then I have that new 10, and it's just right there. So that means I have six tens now, and then I still just have one 100. Let's go ahead and move on to our last way of solving this chip model. And we're going to use a triple number one this time. Alrighty. So, in my ones place, I see that I have 12 ones. In my tens column, I see that I have five tens, which is the same thing as 50. And then in my hundreds column, I notice that I have 100, which is the same thing as 100. If I were to combine these, just like I did in the previous two, I would notice that, again, it takes two more ones to make a full 10, in which I can move that over. I still get the same thing where I have two ones left, six tens, and then one 100. All three ways are great ways to show our chip model in number bonds and with the totals below method or with just the standard vertical algorithm that I've been teaching you. We just now also get to see it in the place value chart and it's very helpful when we are able to see what's going on. All right, friends and families, welcome to the last part of our teacher model, which is using our skills now to practice with a word problem. You may read with me or in your head as I read out loud. Lee's fish tank has 24 gold fish and some silver fish. In all, there are 59 fish in the aquarium. Lee puts in some more silver fish. Now there are 51 silver fish. How many silver fish did Lee put in the tank? My friends, remember great mathematicians, we always go back and we reread the problem so we know exactly what it is that we're solving for and 
so that we can find and circle important numbers. Let's do that. Lee's fish tank has 24 goldfish and some silver fish. Okay, we're going to circle some and silver because that's pretty important. I don't know exactly whether that stands for a part or a whole yet, but we're going to keep reading and see if it helps clarify later on. In all, there are 59 fish in the aquarium. So we're going to circle all and 59. Lee puts in some more silver fish. That's really important. Let's go ahead and circle that. Some more silver fish. Now there are 51 silver fish. We're going to circle now also because that shows us that there's a change in the number. Our question reads, how many silver fish did Lee put in the tank? Well, my friends, we have a lot going on here, so let's go ahead and back up, okay? Lee's fish tank has 24 goldfish and some silver fish. In all, there are 59 fish in the aquarium. Let's pause there, my friends, because that's going to be the first part that we work on. You'll notice I have number one and two because there are two steps to this word problem. The first step is to figure out how many silver fish he had first before he added extra silver fish. Okay, so let's read that again for the first part. Lee's fish tank has 24 gold fish and some silver fish. In all, there are 59 fish in the aquarium. Let's pause there. So there are 59 fishes in the aquarium total. And we know that 24 of those fishes are actually gold fishes. So we can put G for gold. And we don't know yet though, actually how many silver fishes he has. So we're going to put a question mark and then we're going to put an S for silver. My friends, 59 is going to represent our whole because we have the word all. And then we also see that 24 is a part of a bigger number, which is 59. 59 is our whole. And we have two types of fishes. So 24 would be our part. And then the other part that's missing would represent the silver fishes. So let's go ahead and solve that. Would we be doing addition or subtraction though? I don't know. Hmm, let's pause. Let's think about it. So if we have the whole and we have a part and we are solving for a missing part, we're going to be solving with subtraction. So let's do that. Our number sentence would read 59 minus 24 equals. And then with an addition sentence, that would be 24 plus question mark equals. Or what we could do is we could just draw a box. So let's actually go ahead and just draw a box because that's going to be our solution anyways. 24, so the goldfish plus the silverfish equals 59 fishes whole or total. Let's use the arrow way now to solve. We can use arrow way backwards or we can use arrow way forwards. That's why we have two number sentences because it'll tell us which direction to go. If we use the 59 minus 24 subtraction number sentence, we're going to arrow way backwards. But if we use 24 plus blank equals 59, we're going to arrow way forwards. Let's go ahead and arrow way forwards, my friends starting at 24 because that's our given part and we're going to arrow away all the way up to our hole which is 59. 24 and I'm going to jump 30 because I feel like that'll bring us pretty close. That brings me to 54 and then I'm going to arrow away up to oh my gosh just five more because that brings me to 59. Take a look at how many jumps it took me. It took me 30 jumps first and then five more jumps. Therefore, my solution is 35. That means silver, there are 35 silver fishes that were in the tank.
Now let's move on to our second part. Starting where we left off. Lee puts in some more silverfish. Now there are 51 silverfish. How many silverfish did Lee put in the tank? Hmm. My friend. Let's pay attention. Let's go back and reread that for the second part. Lee puts in some more silverfish. Now there are 51 silverfish. How many silverfish did Lee put in the tank? Well, we are just solving for silverfish at this point. They don't mention gold anymore. So let's go ahead and focus on our silverfish. Silver fish. I remember that they said now there are 51 silverfish. That's going to represent my hole. And I know that because they told us that Lee put in some more silverfish. So if Lee put in some more silverfish, that means we're probably going to be solving for a missing part. And I can also see that in the question, it asks us how many silverfish did Lee put in the tank? That's asking us to solve for a hole, my friends, because they told us now, and that's our keyword, now there are 51 silverfish. Now it's a keyword that tells us 51 is the hole. So, and we already know a number as well. We know 35 because that's the amount that he had before he added extra silverfish. Now we don't know how many extra silverfish he added. We just know that before he added silverfish, there were 30, more silverfish, there were 35. Okay, now let's write our number sentence. So he had 35 silverfish and we're just concentrating on silverfish here. He had 35 silverfish and then he added some more so that now he has 51 silverfish. We're not thinking about goldfish anymore, just silverfish. So I can rewrite that as 51 minus 35. 51 is the whole amount that he has now of silverfish. Subtract the amount that he started with in order to find the amount that he added of silverfish. And remember my friends, our number sentences, they often match the arrow way direction that we're going to go. You can do the arrow way backwards if you use the subtraction number sentence and then you can do arrow way forwards if you use the addition number sentence. I'm going to use the addition number sentence because that's pretty easy for me. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm starting at 35, which is the part that we know we have been given and we have already, that we already know. So we're at 35, I'm going to jump 10 more to put me at 45. Then I'm going to jump, ooh, I'm going to jump six more because I know that that gets me to 51 because 45 plus five is 50 and then just one more is 51. So that's why I knew to jump six pretty quickly. I did 10 jumps and then six jumps, meaning then that my missing part is 16. Therefore, our question is answered. The question was, how many silverfish did Lee put in the tank? Well, we know that now. Let's go ahead and write it down. Lee put 16, box in your solution, more silverfish. In the tank. And then make sure you underline silverfish. That's really important because it's not just all the fishes. It's specifically the silverfish in the second problem. All right, friends and families, as you get ready to move into independent practice and your exit ticket, please keep these three things in mind. The first thing to keep in mind is on page 377, your work should look just like this. And remember, we've been practicing our new groups below, which is just the vertical form, pretty much. And you'll see that the new group below is that baby one right there on the line. Totals below is the new strategy we learned today in the teacher's model. Then we have our normal place value chart and chip model. Lastly, we have our original number bond and then our renamed number bond. Moving on. On page 389, your work should look like this. It should be comparing the normal vertical form and then the totals below method. Lastly, 
Solve the word problems with any strategies we have learned so far. Remember to box the solution, write a complete word sentence, a number sentence, and underline the unit. That's pretty normal for any word problems that we encounter. Alrighty, my friends. Don't forget to click the link in the description box below. It will take you to the worksheet. Don't worry about printing it. Just write down the problems on a separate piece of paper and solve it on your own the best that you can. I'm looking forward to seeing all of your work. Good luck. I will see you in the next lesson.